Welcome back to the channel. This is Pastor Anthony. We picked this Fuzon up. We are in Goshen, Indiana. A little while ago, we had to, uh, we went to County Road 38. What was on our bill lading? It was all jacked up, looked all over the yard, got our paperwork, even went in the gate and couldn't find it, couldn't find it, couldn't find it, waited for dispatch, finally got back in touch with me. Finally found out that it was at a different yard. They had misprinted on the paperwork when they dispatched me. So come over here to the Wave Express Yard here on 33. Got this thing picked up pre-trip. Now we're going to eat some lunch and head to Ashland, Virginia. So stay tuned, hang out with us, like, subscribe, share this video. Um, we will be getting back into our Luke chapter 10, the Good Samaritan. And so we'll finish that up. Maybe here in the next day or so, we'll finish it. So we're planning on heading home tomorrow after we deliver this. Uh, we are preaching Sunday, and so we got to get ready for that. Got to finish the sermon. So stay tuned. Hang out with us. It's going to be great. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Pastor Anthony. Well, it seems like we've just been a little slow on videos lately. It's not lack of content. Um, I'm not sure what it is. It's just, uh, just not been videoing. Uh, and I need to get back to doing it and uh, and getting back to sharing life and Jesus with you all one mile at a time. Still have not finished up our uh, Luke study. It's a little bit noisy here. Uh, I'm right here by the highway. I'm at the Funtown RV in Rockwall, Texas. Just got through delivering a fifth wheel. Uh, called to see if they had any transfers and I went ahead and agreed to take one. Uh, it's taking way longer than I wanted, and the more info I found, it doesn't sound like they're really worth taking. So, not sure if we deliver down here again, if we'll do another transfer uh, for them or not. I, you know, I'd rather be back, uh, starting back towards somewhere else to get a better run than something that's only going to pay $1.20 a mile for 84 miles. So, uh, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, uh, doing a lot. Uh, was home for five days. Uh, Viper had to get some some new shoes on there as you can tell uh, they are iron man getting ready for winter and they are riding fabulous the last iron man i had a little bit of a because the tread was so hard at uh i had to uh, take a little while to get them broke in get them used to but these right here are going very well i believe that these are made uh they're thinking either hercules cooper or uh Mastercraft, one of those make actually make these tires. They're made in America, which is a real plus for me. And so we're going to see how well these do and uh, get us through the winter. Was going to do a set of steel wheels, but the more that I researched, that I did find out that it was going to be more of a pain having to switch the wheel sensors and reprogram them every time. And so I was just like, you know what? We'll just keep these clean and be done with it. So that's where we are right now. I'm uh, going to. Uh, finish up our waiting on our BLL so we can take this short load down to down on down to Cleborn, Texas and get that done and then start heading back towards somewhere hoping that something will pop up out of Burnsville going back up north somewhere so that's what we're looking for so we'll see how it goes I will touch base with you all later on this evening hey good evening welcome back to the channel this is Pastor Anthony and Yes, we are on the road. We are uh, sitting in Zanesville, Ohio. We got a 43-foot fifth wheel, uh, which you've seen the picture of. Um, it's been really crazy. We just did our reset at Mount Vernon, Illinois. Um, but, you know, I just the enemy has really been coming at me hard here lately. I'm not sure exactly what what his deal is, or but um, he has definitely been after me uh, pretty hard and I just I have struggled uh, with getting videos out uh, like I was um, I feel like I'm, every time that I'm on uh, the road anymore it seems like I've been so busy that uh, that I haven't been able to stop and just enjoy scenery and share that with you guys you know and I've kind of it's like almost as if I've lost focus and I've been so focused on getting to the next stop and um, and I've been running myself ragged. You know, I spent five days at home last week. We took off and went to Texas. 
did not get a reload because I, I, there was one I could have did, but I had to. Pre I'm preaching this Sunday coming up, and I would have not. And it was going from Burnsville, Mississippi, to Washington, which now that I heard about the snowstorms and ice out that way, um, and 20 degree <laughs> temperatures, um, I'm glad I didn't take it because I have one pair of jeans. Everything else is shorts uh, and uh, one little thin jacket. So uh, definitely a blessing that I did not take that run, but. Um, but the last time I, uh, that I seen you all was we were starting our, our journey in Luke chapter 10, which one of you all asked if I would do a study on. And so uh, we jumped into it. Um, it's, been a little, it's been about a week now since I did that one. Um, you can go back and watch it. And uh, if you feel blessed, you know, subscribe to the channel and uh, like it and share it with your friends because we definitely love sharing Jesus and life one mile at a time uh, so but we're going to get back into swing of things and get things back kind of back to normal and and getting moving and and doing some sightseeing and some scenery and we got some winter coming up uh, Viper got some new uh, shoes so uh, she's ready to go uh, the Michelin still had some tread left but um, wanted to go ahead and get this taken care of and wanted to try to start getting things done so that uh, we were prepared for winter to come uh, this weekend we get home uh, we need to uh, we'll, we'll definitely be doing a service more than likely so uh, but other than that everything's going great Viper's running good she's pulling strong uh, so but anyway now I kind of got you updated I want to jump back into our text which is Luke chapter 10 uh, and the last time that I talked to you we were uh, we did verses 25 through, I think, 29, um, but just to kind of go back over just a little bit, um, I'll read it, and then we'll just kind of, I'll just kind of give you a brief overview of it, of what it was that we talked about, and uh, then we'll jump back into the rest of it. And so, uh, the first part of it is Luke 10, 20, starting in verse 25, it says, and behold, a lawyer stood up, and uh, to put him to the test. This is putting Jesus to the test. Saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, as we discussed last time, to inherit or eternal life. How does that, what does that mean? That means to be saved, to accept Jesus Christ into your life, into a true repentance. Now, that's not a just walk in the aisle, sign a card, say a prayer, and just da dee da dee da and I got out of, you know, got my little card to get me out of hell free. No, that's not how it works at all. It's about true repentance. It's about loving Jesus. It's about giving our lives to Him and truly surrendering. Confess with your mouth and that Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart that God really raised Him from the dead. That's how we are saved. That's how we inherit eternal life. And we see in the next sentence here, Jesus sets Him up and asks the question back to Him. He's like... Um, well, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And so this, Jesus kind of puts it back on this religious leader. And and he says, uh, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so we see here that everything's about loving Jesus and with every single breath that you have. You know, uh, Jesus tells us that, you know, without him, apart from him, we can do nothing. That means breathe. Um, he has that ability to, uh, he can take the breath from us, you know, or he can give us life. He is the author of life. He's the one who created us. And so he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, with all your strength and with all your mind. So this is every single being, every atom, every molecule that we are made up with. Love him just as he loves us so much that he gave, you know, the, you know we read in John chapter 3, 16, he says, God so gave the world. He God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So you see, it's, he loves us so much that he gave his son as a sacrifice to pay for our sins. This is how you inherit eternal life. You believe that. You accept what Jesus did on the cross. You truly believe that he walked out of that grave on the third day. And then you love him back with every breath that you can. 
and then you love your neighbor as you would yourself. You know, we always we take care of ourselves. I mean, we shower ourselves, we feed ourselves, we clothe ourselves, we clip our nails, and you know, some of the girls do the stuff and make themselves all pretty. And you know, and there's guys that pimp themselves up and make themselves look really good. And uh, you know, and for me, I'm just ugly. That's just the way it is. <laughs> but uh, but anyhow, that we want to love our neighbor as we would ourselves. And so Jesus said to him, he said, you have answered correctly, do this and you shall live. So if we follow this, uh, you know, because that's what Jesus says, says, you know, love him with everything and then love your neighbor. And, you know, that is what we're supposed to do. That is how we're to live. And so when you look on, uh, we see this, now we see in verse 29, it says, but he, this is talking about the religious leader, uh, trying, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, "Who is my neighbor?" So what it was really is, as this uh, this guy was trying to uh, make himself look better. I mean, he was really just uh, uh, it's like he was in charge of like he didn't really care about the others. He was like, I didn't, you know. He's like, all right, Jesus, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trip you up here. He's like. You know, I'm trying to be excluded from what you're saying is you know, love my neighbor as myself. And he's like, well, so who is my neighbor? You know, he had his little, you know, the priestly hood or whatever, the, you know, the, his peeps. And uh, he was thinking that that's all he had, you know, that, that was required of him. But Jesus is like, mm -mm, that's not it at all. He's like, because he's like, Jesus is like, all right, I'm going to tell you who your neighbor is. And we learned from you know the last time I showed you this, you know the a neighbor. Let me look back over. And do very good. We get my notes. The neighbor is someone who lives next to you, or a fellow human. And so Jesus is about to show him who his neighbor is, through this parable, which we were going to read. Now, I'll read it through, and then we'll talk about it. Uh, beginning in verse 30, uh, Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among some robbers, who stripped him and beat him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down that road, and he saw him, and he passed on the other side. So, likewise, a Levite... Uh, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, journeyed, or journeyed, uh, he came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. And he went up and bound him up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and set him on his animal, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And the next day he took two denarii and gave it to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be uh, the neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? And he said, the one who showed mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. And I love the way Jesus does this, because he told this story uh, in a way that uh, this religious leader, this lawyer, would not be able to question and come back at him uh, just like, oh, you just made that up. He made it sound very, it was made to sound very real uh, because the road he was talking about going from Jerusalem to Jericho was a heavily traveled road uh, for many people. And, you know, from religious leaders to just normal folk just going back and forth, uh, the Samaritans. And one of the things Jesus did here, he was showing that, uh, like the religious leaders and his Levite, uh, they were they were the peeps. You know, they were the ones who coexisted and and you know lived together and talked together and hung out together. The Samaritans were outcasts. They didn't want anything to do with them. They they didn't like them. They didn't they they hated their guts. They didn't want anything to do with them. And so Jesus made. The Samaritan, the hero of the story, and really put to shame the other two because they didn't do anything. They didn't show any compassion. They didn't show any love for their neighbors. Uh, they didn't do anything. And this really teaches us 
uh, you and I about uh, the compassion that you and I are supposed to have. And, you know, and so much problems you hear all the time now on the news, I mean, out of people's mouths, is nothing but race, 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 this, race, and that, racism, racist. And I have had a gut full of the nonsense. I'm sick of it. And right here we say, love your neighbors yourself. It doesn't matter what color your skin is, what your ethnic background is. It doesn't matter where you're from. You, you are my neighbor. I am your neighbor. And we are to love each other as you love yourself. This is what the Bible says. I'm so tired of listening to all the nonsense and the division that's going on in our country. And if we follow this first, love the Lord your God with all your, with everything, and then love your neighbors yourself, we would not have the problems that we, we are having today. And this is what Jesus is trying to show him, you know, because the religious leaders of this time was all about themselves, all about the rules and the regulations and the laws, and they didn't care about anybody but them taking care of themselves and how they could benefit from what, each situation. And this is what we see today. We need to look at this and really uh, you know, turn our hearts and help others and love them as Christ loves us. And that's the kind of love that we need to be showing. We need to have compassion. We need to teach and love others. And we see them in need and hurting. We need to be praying for them openly. Not going, not just walking, oh, well, I'll pray for you and then go home and, and flip on the TV. You need to pray for these people. You need to... If there's something you can do to help and serve, whether it be food banks or laying on of hands and praying and or donating your time, you know, to help go to schools and, and, and teach kids how to read. I, I mean, there's so many things that we could be doing and the church today should be doing and the churches are not doing. They're closing down. They're, they're so scared of the COVID, you know, and I've had a gut full of all of this nonsense because we're not loving our neighbors as ourselves. Jesus said, go and lay hands and pray for those who are sick and diseased. Put your hands on them. We don't have the spirit of fear. We need to show compassion for others. We need to help them in their time of need because there's so much in the mental health crisis nowadays. Seeing people committing suicide and, and depression and, you know, and so fearful that they won't even leave their house. And there, and the separation anxiety is just—it's overwhelming what we're seeing nowadays. And we, the church, needs to get up and help those people up out of the street, take them to the end, care for their wounds, and then come and then be back to check on them later to make sure that they're doing okay. This is what the scripture is saying. Just saying, and Jesus is saying. Our neighbor is the one who showed him mercy. Jesus says, go and do likewise. We are to show others mercy just as Christ showed us mercy. You and I, we deserve to be cast into the lake of fire, into hell. And because of the love that Christ has for us, you and I have an opportunity to spend eternal life with him. You know, one part of scripture that we read, uh, Jesus said that, you know, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I needed clothes, you clothed me. When I was in your prison, you come and visited me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was hurt, you wound, you, know, you bandaged my wounds. And you know, in the scriptures, is people going, well, when did, when did we do that, Lord? And he's like, the things that you do for the least of these, these people, others, our neighbors, he said, you did for me. So when we show love and kindness towards others and serve them and look for opportunities to help them, then we are it's just if we're doing it for Christ. And you know, and there's another pa passage that tells us that we are to work as if we're working for Christ and doing things as we're doing for Christ. We are to serve just as Jesus did. You know, that's you know, he said he didn't come, you know. Uh, he said he came to serve and to seek. You know, uh, is it Luke nineteen ten says the Son of Man came to seek and to save which was lost. He came to serve us, to love us, to give us a way to go to heaven, to have that eternal home. And you and I need to be in that same mindset and tell others about Jesus Christ and what He has done for us and what He is. And just how bad and how this not how bad, but how desperately he wants a relationship with them and how much he loves them. 
that's our role. It's our duty because all of those people that we know that have not accepted Christ are laying in the street dying more or less. They are dead to their in, in their sin and you and I have know how to have the gift of life, that eternal life, and that's a relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you were watching this and you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or uh, maybe you're watching this and you don't know that, it, and you're like, well, you know, I'm not really sure if I've ever been saved. Well, it's not too late. But it, all you have to do is confess that you are a sinner. Ask Christ to come into your heart and to forgive you of your sins and truly believe in all your being that Jesus really lived on this earth. He really uh, uh, died on the cross and he really rose on the third day and he did it all for you and for me. He wants a relationship, a personal relationship. But you have to turn from your sin and run to him and he'll be waiting with open arms. But it's up to you to make that decision. And then after you do that and you make that decision, then we need to follow in his footsteps and serve others and be just like the Samaritan and have compassion, show love, not be a doormat. You know, don't let people take advantage of you, but pray for them. You know, serve them. Do what you can to help others and just follow the scripture. That's where I'm going to leave this video. Um, we're going to end it in prayer. I hope that this is a blessing to you. And again, if you would, if you're finding a uh, blessing with this video and uh, you've enjoyed the teaching, you know, comment below and that something other, else you would like for me to teach on or talk about. If you have questions concerning what I talked about and you would like to ask, you know, be feel free to do that. Um, if you do not know Jesus, um, you know, get in touch with me, you know, be a message here. Uh, go to at Pastor Lucas 7 on Instagram. You can message me there. Um, and I'll be happy to try to help you in any way that I can. And uh, so I'm going to end this in prayer. And we will see you all soon. Um, may try to do some pictures of the, or try to do something tomorrow when we get started on the next one. Uh, this week as we start so we'll see how it goes so uh, let's pray and we will see you all soon father god lord we just thank you so much again for allowing me the opportunity just to set and open your word and dive in and just talk about the scriptures lord and father it just means so much um, how powerful your words are and how they impact us you know you tell us that your word is living and breathing and active and it's sharper than any double-edged sword and Lord, you just tell us that we need to uh, fill our hearts with your word and you tell, let it be a light into our path and a lamp into our feet. Lord, we just ask you to let it continue to teach us and guide us and move us forward and keep us safe, Lord. But use us, teach us, challenge us. Let us reach out to those who don't know you. Father, help me be a stronger light. Uh, get the the confusion or, or the the weariness or the whatever that's holding me back or that, that I'm not sure if I'm not serving you the way that you would have me to get those things out of the way and also those who are watching this video Lord get barriers out of the way pierce their hearts Lord if they don't know you or if they're having trouble walking with you Lord that they may find you and have that personal relationship and begin to move forward and grow stronger and stronger Lord, we just want to continue to share this journey, share you, share life together one mile at a time. We want to be together and just continue to grow stronger and closer as one family under the umbrella of, of you. So, Lord, we love you. Thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys and gals, we shall see you soon.